Next, we're going to look at some of the prime turning enhancements. So I'm going to reuse my last toolpath and then I'll reverse it. We have our prime turning tool. We'll set the tool angle. I'll set this one to about 45. Maybe not about, maybe exactly 45. And we'll say tool spindle prime turning. So we got that set on. Uh, now we'll go to some of the rough parameters and I'll set these to some of my favorites. Uh, we'll clean up corners, do slight overlap. And pretty good set here. So a new function that if you guys are familiar with the prime turning is you're going to notice that we have angle. Now this part is going to be best at a zero degree angle, but say we had something conical shaped, I could redo the roughing to be at a separate angle. We can do minus 40, we can do 40, whatever would match the part shape better. We now have that option to do our prime turning rough at that angle. So I'll leave that alone. Another enhancement inside of the prime turning is on the feed rate. If you want to do a secondary feed rate, you can have it override, and now we have a distance from end cut option. So before it was only available for the um, axial cutting, now it is available for the, the secondary feed rate. So definitely some cool options inside there. I'll leave that one alone. We'll do a quick finish pass. Green check, let that think for a sec. So definitely some other cool functions in there. Um, I like to be able to see it, change the angle and then um, let that process real quick. And then once that gets done, we'll look at one more enhancement on the prime turning. So just to give it a sec. Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at some of the, oh, never mind, it's done. Let's look at the other enhancement. So on top of the prime turning, we now have the option to do a pinch turn using prime. So I'm going to set my axis combination correct. It'll find our tool. We'll say I'll do number of revolutions. Let's do three revolutions before that comes in. It's going to cut the upper turret first. And now my prime turning is going to be balanced between the top and bottom. So definitely another cool option inside the prime um, turning options. Now that's going to take a sec. So we got that one all processed and ready to go. Next thing I want to talk about, which is probably going to be a fan favorite, on the milling. We now have every milling toolpath available. Previously, we weren't able to use some of the legacy toolpaths, but everything's, if you, you even want to do 2D and then swept or loft, you can bring those in. I'm going to stick with everybody's favorite 3D toolpath, Lowline. The gateway drug to surfacing. And then we'll check our flow cut direction. Looks good. So even though this is a legacy toolpath, they added this setup page inside of here. So we can say we'll do a planar rotation aligned with spindle. This page is going to look the same as what we're used to in mill. And this page is going to look the same as well. I'm going to just decrease that step over a little bit so we get some fun looking toolpath. And voila. Now, we'll be quick and easy about this one. I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of it all the way around. So now we have all the sides done, and that is some of the cooler enhancements to Milturn. But I have one more thing I want to show you. So inside the Tool Setup Manager, we have to set all these tools up. Um, I'm going to do the quick, easy button and just load. And we're going to look at our lower turret real quick. And we can see it butted that tool all the way down. That may work, but... Looks like we're buttoned up right there. Not a big fan of that one. Let's look at how we can extend it. And we're going to measure it off of this uh, edge. So as before, we could set projection length. I'm going to rotate this around. And 
the default didn't really give us a very good you know reference numbers we have a new option inside of this so if you notice we have that little uh, square this is going to be for motion this is alignment dynamic um, transform had that ability too so I'm going to say I'm going to realign I'm going to line up my endpoint with about the tip of the tool we'll need to find an edge somewhere and then I'm going to align the reference point to the end of the tool locator I'll click on the square again now we're moving in the part I can say from the tool locator I want the tip to be two and a half inches away so now we have a good solid reference that's a lot make, makes a lot more sense and this is probably one of my favorite enhancements to the whole thing so now if you look at that we can see the tool sticking out a little bit further and we have a good reference to, to that tool locator so that is some of the um, better enhancements we'll go ahead and see what this looks like check out the tool motion and see what our part does. So just want to check it out. Here we go. We have our rough lower turrets part waiting to get synchronized with the pinch. And then here's our favorite flow line tool path. So definitely some cool options. Um, again, we have the new ability to um, change our reference points on the tool projection in the MT for the mill turn. We can save our defaults. You can save iterations of your favorite defaults. Um, also, all tool paths are available for mill turn for the milling. And that is another great enhancement. And then the some few changes to the prime turning. So. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Reach out to us if you have any other questions. Thank you.